After weeks of waiting, TwitchCon finally happened. Twitch's biggest names came together to stream, celebrate, and meet their fans, but the party wasn't great for everyone. In fact, for some, it was a nightmare, both physically and emotionally. So TwitchCon, if you're not sure what that is, it is a convention for all things Twitch. So streamers, their fans, their mods, everyone comes together and has one big celebration of the platform. This one was in San Diego with many creators and fans coming together to have what Twitch themselves described as an IRL party. Seems fun enough. Conventions happen all the time and this one should have been fine, except that's not what seemed to happen. See, news started to break via tweets that TwitchCon wasn't exactly keeping up with the standards of safety that we would expect for a large event. One of the most known parts of the event was this foam pit, which as far as I can tell was put up by Lenovo and Intel. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this clip. Oh my gosh! Big sips and sips of her own! Great victory there. All right, we'll make sure she's okay. Get her out of the pit. Landed on her tailbone. If you don't know who that is, that is Adriana Chechik, who is an adult performer and Twitch streamer with 800,000 followers. Adriana revealed that as a result of that landing, she had broken her back in two places and would need surgery. Listen, as someone who has also broken her back, albeit with a stress fracture and not with an impact like Adriana's, Spine injuries can have lasting impacts. There are certain things that I still cannot do because of my injury, and my injury was not nearly as serious as Adriana. But Adriana apparently was not the only person to have sustained an injury from that foam pit. Adriana was retweeting different accounts of people being injured at this specific foam pit, including Locke Van Ness, who said that they were at the hospital. Locke Van Ness also posted this video of them getting the injury. It said that they sustained a dislocated knee and sprained ankle. Adriana also tweeted, why did at Lenovo Legion say here you can dive in? They opened the pit up a second day after the first person injured their foot and ankle bad enough to leave hashtag TwitchCon in a brace. Multiple people were injured and they kept the pit open, said jump in booty first. As well as special shout out to the random off work EMT who got the workers at the booth to realize how bad I was injured and to make them keep me still and calm me down until others got there. You really kept me from crying badly. The foam pit was a collab by Lenovo and Intel participants had to sign waivers. Eventually the pit was shut down. Kotaku reported a statement from Lenovo who said, we are aware of the incidents of TwitchCon visitors who sustained injuries in the Gladiator game soft foam pit at the Lenovo booth. The area has since been closed for any further use while we work with the event organizers to look into the incidents. This foam pit was not the only safety concern at TwitchCon. There were serious allegations regarding what was happening at TwitchCon and its overall lack of safety and care for its attendees. Firstly, there were many tweets alleging that TwitchCon was not meeting accessibility needs of its attendees, as well as those with accessibility needs being put in legitimate danger as this following tweet illustrates. The fact that there are people trying to trample people in wheelchairs to get into this panel is disgusting and security was doing nothing. We literally had to yell at security officials to let people with wheelchairs through. Another tweet said that after someone had a flare of a PTOS while waiting in line, left to breathe, and when they came back, security was quote, nothing but rude and did not let them back in. Speaking of security, there is this clip of security saying that attendees were cussing them out among other issues that security says they faced. These people that come to this thing were so verbally abused us. Oh, what? Yeah, oh yeah, they were terrible. To be clear, I'm not excusing anyone's behavior. This is just what was said. Steve Saylor, a Twitch ambassador wrote, being at TwitchCon, using the accessibility services, I saw some faults. Most of them had to do with the convention center staff security and not the Twitch staff. I also did hear it being suggested to get an accessibility sticker to skip lines, even if not disabled. That's true. There was an entire thread dedicated to the apparent numerous issues at TwitchCon where a lot of these tweets come from detailing pretty harrowing experiences of those who had accessibility needs. Other serious issues that were detailed included Twitch misgendering streamers and allegedly deleting messages that were meant to alert people of the streamer's correct pronouns. This was in addition to the introduction of the panel saying woman streamers when one of the streamers is non-binary. People also pointed out that while attendees wearing masks were eventually added to TwitchCon policies, it seemed like no one was 
just following the rules and we're putting folks at risk. And yes, before you ask, it is in the official health measures that, quote, regardless of vaccination status, all attendees will be required to wear approved face coverings to enter and remain at TwitchCon. Users also reported that TwitchCon stopped doing bag checks and that some content creators panels were completely mismanaged for their size. In addition to all of this, Amaranth, one of Twitch's most prolific streamers, said that a stalker managed to show up at TwitchCon, which basically forced her to sequester in her own room. Security had to get involved as the stalker showed up. Just because I have security, though, doesn't mean I want the stalker to see me. So that's why I went up to the room and then I got that message and it never came down. Amaranth has had a pretty serious ongoing issue with stalking as of late. I don't know if this is the same person, but regardless, it is something that she has had to deal with in the past. There were also reports of people's drinks being spiked, as well as an account of drugging and sexual assault. All of this is what helped the hashtag boycott Twitch hashtag to be used by people on Twitter who were fed up with everything that had allegedly been happening at TwitchCon. Twitch has had a very rough past few months. And by that, it means been called out consistently by its community for its lack of equitable treatment, a fair revenue split, and the complete lack of basic safety measures for both online and in person. And with the lack of results and satisfactory responses, it seems like TwitchCon is just the latest in the saga of Twitch being unable to deliver for its users on the most basic level of needs, people's well-being. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, then hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.